don't know, they don't, they don't understand what it's like to go through that when you're seven. More people are stepping forward, saying they too suffered severe abuse at the hands of some local nuns. Tonight, a major development. For the first time, the local victims are starting to see offers of restitution. After a dogged News 5 investigation continues to expose what happened at a former home for children. The Sisters of Charity used to run the home called Parmadale, and tonight we're learning more about how it plans to compensate victims. News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh has been working on this investigation now for nearly a year. Jonathan, I can look at this right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, dozens of people have filed complaints. Some of the people featured in your reports are now talking about some kind of some payments. That's correct. Yeah, Rob, and, and many of these people are in their 60s mm -hmm. now, and they say that they've carried these memories of abuse for decades with serious childhood trauma consequences. Barb Kuznikov says when she was young, her parents suffered from mental and financial problems. So at just seven years old, she was sent to Parmadale. I wasn't a person. I didn't, I didn't mean anything to anybody. She tells us the abuse Sister Myra Wazikowski handed out was unbearable, including an incident on a staircase. She dragged me down by my hair, down those steps, and then made me kneel in the living room in front of the fireplace and just kneel with my arms out with encyclopedias on them. Barb says once there was a serious fire in her dorm, but Sister Myra forced the children to the top floor because she wanted us to drag stuff from the attic downstairs. I Putting mean, you in danger. Yes. Risking I mean, your lives. It was crazy. It was the craziest thing I've ever experienced. But it wasn't just Sister Myra. Barb says another nun targeted her brother, who was also at Parmadale. I watched her totally abuse my brother one day when he wouldn't eat and he cried and he cried. Barb ran away a lot. One time, she went back to her home, and at one point, her mother told her to go take a shower. I looked in the mirror, and I had bruises all over my body. And I went out and told her. I showed her. I said, this is why I'm running away, because I, I can't do it anymore. I just can't. Barb says her mom went straight to Parmadale. She told him, she said, I'm not, I'm not doing this. My children are being abused. They let us all go. Did they ever launch an investigation into Nothing. the abuse? Nothing. Well, after our explosive investigation into Parmadale, the Sisters of Charity are starting to do something. The Sisters have established a victim's assistance fund, and in recent letters that we've obtained, they've told former Parmadale residents if they have abuse claims, they need to file those by the end of this year. If for some reason more investigation is needed, some of those cases could last until the end of next year. Well, I was scared. I was scared being in there a lot. Our investigation started when Carolyn Mason's family reached out to us. We've discovered Carolyn has now been offered restitution for the abuse she endured. However, payments are in the form of items or services, what they call needs of the victims. We're told distributions will be made through an attorney hired by the Sisters of Charity and that attorney would get a cut of the money used to fill those needs. We asked the Sisters of Charity for an on-camera interview. It declined our offer. Holding people accountable is critical because it's the only way people learn. Lynn Skunta is a licensed social worker who's helped people for 45 years, including many who've gone through childhood trauma at the hands of trusted adults. The difficulty is that they didn't know, like, why didn't they love me? Why didn't they take care of me? Why did it, and, and that stays. Did you think that then the beatings were the norm? Yes, exactly, you do. You don't know who to trust. We have to raise awareness about adverse childhood experiences. Ohio Representative Gail Pavliga from Portage County is also a doctor of psychology. She's introduced House Bill 428, calling for a 16 expert commission to study adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs, Things like violence, abuse, suicide in the family, and more. These particular experiences that they've had, they have no way to fully understand and to be able to process them, but they are affected. The CDC reports more than 60% of adults surveyed in 25 states said they experienced at least one ACE. 
The bill also calls for a sitting legislator for the commission. They will be able to hear the deliberations of this group and be able to immediately begin to address and start to write policy and legislation to address ACEs. Help from all levels, including victims helping each other. Victims like Debbie Deming and Tina Blasick, who we featured in past reports, and who have met up with Barb. People are trying to put it behind themselves. They don't want to stay there. It's affected people's lives for so many years, and it's, it's, it's taken its toll on people. And, and you know, it, it needs to come out. It needs to come out. Barb says Parmadale victims are broken people. And if you experienced abuse there, she encourages you to file your complaint with the Sisters of Charity right away. And Rob, just tough stories to listen to as you sit down with these women. What reporting. Jonathan, uh, great job on this. Strong stuff. Let's get back to the bill you mentioned to study trauma. That's already gaining some traction. Yeah, House Bill 428. It's passed the Ohio House. It now sits in the Ohio Senate. And we're waiting to see where it goes from there. Of course, we'll follow it through that process. Again, thank you for this reporting. It is so needed. Okay, uh, you can read a full statement from the Sisters of Charity. It's up right now on our News 5 app. Jonathan, thank you.